Cheers, guys. FX911, welcome to the Elitist Geek. VR news for July 12th. Quick update on the Oculus Rift issue that I was having. So I mentioned uh, yesterday it was resolved and I'd had it narrowed down. I was able to do further testing, figured out it was the display port. So that makes sense because the chance of it being all three USB types, you know, by two different manufacturers just seemed a little too unlikely, statistically speaking. And I'm happy to report that was the case. That's not to say there aren't USB issues, right? You only have to look up Google Rift USB, Rift HDMI, and you will see literally a metric crap ton of issues. That was the original DisplayPort adapter to HDMI that I tried, didn't work. It was this one that worked. And when it did work, it worked in, which is always, it worked in every single port. And with every, you know, type of USB, I tried all of them and that, and this worked. So I thought maybe it's passive versus active. Had a active, a known active display port adapter at work, tried it, didn't work, researched some more. This one ends up being passive. So it wasn't that. My first news article is going to kind of get into that a little bit more. Uh, because I think we know why now. And again, it's not to say there aren't USB issues. There are a ton, but there's also some video issues. So bottom line is it's working, which is fantastic. And it's working reliably. So I can just get down to the fun stuff on either of the Vive, because I have the non-dead Pixel one now, and the Rift. So first article uh, furthers that update a little bit. So NVIDIA has released a bit of a mea culpa statement in that they screwed up on their latest driver, which was 368.69, which of course I upload or I updated to. Apparently there's known display port issues, which makes all the crap that I went through. It doesn't necessarily address the direct to HDMI that wasn't working, but at least the display ports, right? They acknowledge there was a display port issue and hell, maybe there's some code in there that the HDMI shares that prevent the rift from being detected. That could be, right? So anyways, they've acknowledged that the next driver update is going to have a fix for that. So you better believe that's going to be the first damn thing I test because when that update comes, according to them, this should work. And I'll let you guys know. The second thing that their driver was doing was the boost wasn't working. And a couple of you mentioned this to me uh, in the comments. So I thank you guys for that and did the research to dig into that a bit more. But absolutely, you are correct. It wasn't boosting. So you would play a virtual reality game and you were playing basically at stock unboosted speeds, right? I didn't notice that. But then again, the difference on the Founders Edition, it's not huge, right? It's five to 15%, depending on the game you're playing. Uh, it could be higher, but for the games that I played, that was the difference between boosted and not. So it wasn't very noticeable, right? But I will look for it in the new driver to make sure that it's now boosting the clock properly. Amazing. And that's kind of the next thing I want to talk about is, is quality control. Right, touched on this in a previous video, but it bears repeating. When I was fresh with my comp science out of university, I worked for Electronic Arts Canada. I started out as a games tester. I then went into uh, networking and hardware compatibility testing before finally ending up in TechServe and then leaving Electronic Arts. And this ties in directly to the Rift compatibility issue. It blows me away, guys. Like seriously, freaking blows me away that Oculus did almost no hardware compatibility testing. I can't believe they did any based on this. When I worked at Electronic Arts and did the hardware compatibility testing, so unlike just straight testing of bugs in software in the game, Hardware compatibility testing had you do stuff like, obviously this isn't a video card, but take every video card with a specific game and make sure that there's no driver issues, right? 
first thing we did. We did that during alpha, well, mostly beta actually, which is part of the frustration. It's like for Vive and Rift, we are the beta testers. You would think given the time it took to develop, they would have done that testing already, right? And back then we didn't just have three video card manufacturers, right? NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel. There was literally a dozen or more video card manufacturers, and yet we did that. Why didn't Oculus do that? Like it just, I can't believe 2016, <laughs> hardware compatibility testing has been around forever, and they didn't do any. And I know they didn't do any, and they, I have no proof, right? But they couldn't convince me they did any based simply on the fact that they have no list on their website of compatible cards or compatible USB devices or manufacturers, right? They are basically sending people or giving one example of a card, the Inatec of a USB card, and they have a display adapter that they recommend. They're basically saying, you do the testing for us, right? Either buy one of these two or test it, it may not work. You can run their tool, which is really a sales tool, like I said, it'll tell you you're compatible and you still aren't when you actually go to install it. So anyways, off on a tangent there guys, but that just blows me away. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, anybody who's worked at Rift or Vive, or you can talk about that, uh, why that kind of level of testing wasn't done. Again, for a new hardware device, that would have been like the first main testing that you do. But any hoogles. Road to VR has an article also dealing with the Rift. Honestly, not picking on these guys because we know Vive has had their own share of issues because we've been talking about that for the last couple of weeks. But uh, Oculus has made a claim now that all their pre-orders are shipped, every single one. So if there's anybody out there watching this who is on the pre-order, who hasn't received notification yet, you know, let us know. I'd be really curious to see how accurate that statement is. Part of me doesn't quite buy it. Although their shipments have gotten better, you know, case in point, my own, right? The other thing that they mention is the availability, finally, of the Oculus Touch. It's going to be in the fourth quarter, which is October, November, December, probably December in time for the holiday season. And not a moment too soon. They had to have it available this year. If they would have gone into next year without it, that would have just been not a good move, right? I'm going to be first in line for it because the first thing I want to do, guys, is test it with this. Because I made no secret. I love this. I love this device because that cylindrical kind of remote control design with the trigger where it is, it works for gun games, convincing your brain. It works for sword-based games. It works for shield-based games. So I'm really curious how the Oculus Touch is going to compare because its design is slightly different. It still probably feels like a grip, but... I'm sure there's going to be some differences. So we will find out what they are when we get our hands on one. The next article I want to talk about is a company called Archeon. And uh, this was an upload VR article. I still have some updates on the um, sources for the last video, which I'll get tonight as well. They're developing a network storage device with crazy speeds. So they claim uh, 8,000 megabytes per second. Most of us have home connections in the megabit range, like mine's 100 megabit. If you take 8,000 megabytes and you divide it by eight, because there's eight bits in a byte, you get 1,000 megabits, which is pretty damn fast <laughs> speed. That would be able to deliver 4K and it would certainly be able to deliver VR. So really excited for that kind of innovation. And that's another thing that makes this whole VR experience so amazing is that we've got all these emergent parallel, sometimes just newly thought up technology that's being built to address virtual reality in 
all the different ways that virtual reality shows itself. It's kind of like having our own space race or Cold War, right? US versus Soviets, AMD versus Nvidia. They need each other. They keep each other honest and they keep each other innovating and moving forward. If there was a monopoly, sure, we'd still get updates, but they would be way fewer and farther in between because they don't have the need to innovate as aggressively. They own the market. So for me, it's just another sign that cool things are coming. So can't wait. Going to link that in the article below. The next one, this was from a website called Tech2. This one pissed me off. And maybe I'm misinterpreting the tone of the author in the article, but he seems to be building a case that augmented reality is going to destroy VR because it's cheaper, this, 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 and this, when I think the two are mutually inclusive. I don't think it's one over the other. And his logic kind of falls apart, and it's what one of my profs, philosophy profs would have said is a logical fallacy. The case that he builds is just filled with holes. Even the headline, and I'm going to link it, but the headline is Pokemon Go Slayed Virtual Reality Hype in Favor of Augmented Reality. And then goes on to build the case on, again, it's cheaper, it's this, 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 this. So have a read of it. Let me know what you guys think. The problem with text, whether it's email or a posting, is it's so damn hard to convey tone, whether it's tongue in cheek, aggressive, not so aggressive. How many fights have started because of email and text, right? Because you're just interpreting the tone incorrectly. So I could be wrong, but if I'm not, that's not the kind of article we need. We don't, it's way too early in the game to start saying one technology is going to win over the other. There's plenty of room for both. They're totally different. Just like 3D on 2D, as I call it. Conventional is different from virtual reality. Augmented takes a bit of both and goes off in its own direction, right? You can easily make up a con list for augmented reality, just like you do for VR. He talked about all those things, it being expensive, yet he didn't acknowledge any of the deficiencies on the augmented reality side. That's not a fair comparison. Think about it. What could you say about augmented reality if you wanted to point out negatives, right? That, what if you live in the Sahara Desert? What if you've got a game where you're chasing penguins around? Yeah, that's realistic, right? Having your penguins hop on sand dunes. So, look, and obviously there's ways around that. It's an analogy, crazy maybe, just to get my point across that it serves a specific purpose and market and it doesn't need to come at the cost of VR or any other type of gaming. So have a read. Let me know what you guys think. And then lastly, co-op multiplayer. I nerded it up big time in the Elite game when I said, imagine having your buddy in the other chair. You're looking at each other, right? Virtual avatars. He's the gunner. You're the navigator. Like, I can't think of a freaking better co-op experience than that. That would just be amazing. Dirt Rally, same thing with the game that I talked about uh, yesterday, right? The fact that you could have a driver and a navigator. And again, both share that VR experience. So there's all kinds of potential. But the article specifically talks about a demo called Toy Box. And it's to do with the Oculus uh, motion controllers. That... You basically have an in-game avatar and your in-game avatar is wearing headphones, speaking, you speak into a mic, the other person hears that. So you're both avatar heads over a play field, which is the toy box, and you're manipulating those objects cooperatively, right? It kind of reminded me, and this is really old school and going way back to a game called Populous, which was a God type game, which has kind of been superseded by four times games now, but back then it was a genre and you basically played God, right? In Populous. There's all kinds of potential for that. An RTS game or a four times game in multiplayer where you're, you know, whether it's spaceships like um, uh, Masters of Orion, right? That kind of game and you're building up colonies and fighting each other, four times is just such an awesome fit. Uh, 
for VR, I hadn't even thought about it. So anyways, I thought that was neat and definite potential there for a whole different use of VR yet again. All right, guys, bit of a long one. Just had a few more topics on that one. As always, cheers.